Blues View. Coach Blue, thanks for taking the time out of your exceptionally busy schedule to speak to Clipper TV. Congrats on an amazing start to the season. 11-0 record, 34 goals scored, only two conceded. Teams played some incredible soccer. What's impressed you most about the team so far this season? Hey, thanks, Alex. Thanks for having me here. I also appreciate all your stuff you're doing with the uh, with the clips and everything. It's great stuff. The kids enjoy it. We enjoy it. And all the parents enjoy it. So thanks for taking that time for that, first of all. Um, yeah, you know, amazing start for us. I think we're building off last year, really. We have a group of seniors that, you know, a little bad taste in their mouth from losing that Norwell game and they want to even take it farther this year so you know they were all off-season work that the kids put in was really shows coming off from the start and we came off flying and, we, and we're still we're still getting right there competing competing really well in every game and taking it at teams absolutely you've really taken a lot of teams to the cleaners and any specific games that stand out in terms of the way that the team has played the level of performance that you're really looking for I think recently in actually the Methuen game which I really tore them apart, and I, they're a half decent team. And I think um, you know our movement, and our urgency, and how we move the ball quick and find the spaces really show what we can do with pick apart pick apart a team. And we did that pretty early on in the game too. And um, I think that shows what we can do. Now we got to make sure we're doing that right through. We're playing some tougher teams like Central Catholic and Beverly. We get to that um, you know North Reading at home, screaming another game like that. Well, we got to bring that mentality and that ball movement to those games too. You've had a pretty tough schedule. How's the uh, squad bearing up? Any injuries or any uh, concerns on that front? More the little knocks and nicks and actually the, the kind of the cold and the flu and the chest stuff's been going through that's made us a little bit, I think a lot of guys kind of a little bit wary. Um, we've had a couple of weeks in a row with, you know, one day off between games. And um, it'll be nice after this game to get a little rest. We have a little bit of law on the schedule here uh, before we play on Tuesday. Then we don't play till Friday and then we have a whole week off. So we got to get through this last um, game tomorrow and we'll have a little bit of a rest to get back healthy and get us all together. Um, yes, yeah, so that's been a little bit tough and I think it showed in some games. For sure, yeah. Defensively, you've had a remarkable record of uh, nine shutouts. You've only conceded two goals in 11 games. What do you put that down to? Well, I'll, I'll start with our, our, net, our net play of Owen Tank and, and you know, he's, he's bailed us out a couple times when he's had to, which is huge. Um, that part's been big, you know, especially in that North Reading game. And, but his leadership on there and his command of the goal and just like, like his, his voice in the back has been huge for us. He's really stepped it up and improved. He's like, in my opinion, you know, at practice, I'm going to watch him play as a college level goalie now. So it kind of starts from there. And then we have two veteran guys in the, in the back, in the middle there with Kellen and Luke. And then you throw Spencer, who's been a, you know, a couple year starter for us already. We, we already have the mix for good stuff. And we're adding Ben Cotter in the back in there, who's come back from a little bit of a back injury. And uh, Finn Engel stepping up in the back. That's just really solidified our back line. And, um, but on top of that, how we possess the ball takes away a lot of chances from, from teams. You know, it's like, you know, we have the ball for the amount of time we have it. The other team's going to have a hard time getting it and scoring us. So guys in our midfield still defend. I mean, Henry gets after it in the midfield there. And uh, Sean, uh, freshman stepping in, they really gets after it defending, including, uh, you know, Bovey getting back to the ball. And even back to the forwards, you see guys like James uh, playing the underneath spot, chasing guys back to win it. You know, and um, sometimes I got to get on him to do that. Now he's doing it naturally, though, and that stuff's made a difference with our defense. Yeah, you do seem to be more of a possession team this year, you know, than in previous years, perhaps. And uh, you know, is that something that you've you've worked on with this group of players uh, to really like? It's, you know, it's really to do with their talent, and they're able to possess it like that. That's do with it. You know, I still want to. Um, you know, we're not Barcelona. It's not quite club soccer stuff, and that you got to get after it in high school soccer. So I still like the direct play at the same time we possess it. So whenever we can change change fields and get after it down one side after, I want to do that. But at the same time, if we can possess the ball a bit and do that, that's that's ideally how we want to play. Yeah, you also carry a great threat on the set plays. I mean, Colwell's delivery and uh, Smith's been putting some great corners in. James has scored a few direct free kicks is that something you work on a lot as well in, the, in training yeah I put a little more emphasis on it especially with our size that we have on the pitch right now so we want to we want to get corner kicks one we want to get the ball wide to our speed players and then get and then get corners at least after if we don't get across we want to get a corner and so we kind of we, we got to do that then we worked on our corner kicks and now you know Spencer we bring him across the whole field to deliver a ball because he's put us on the spot nine times out of ten it's in a dangerous spot for us and uh, with our height we're going to get we're going to get our heads in a lot of balls you know, and we have a little tenacity in the box on top of the height. So we put that together. We're going to get some goals in that. Uh, the free kicks, we've, um, you know, we purchased some dummies that we used this year that we put out in the field. And uh, we've been used throwing them out of practice. So James gets a bunch of hits on them. Um, we covered it a lot preseason. 
And you know, honestly, we probably got to do a little bit more now. We've got to get comfortable with it. And now when we have our days off, we've got to take some hits um, and practice some of those free kicks even more. Maybe put some plays in as we go further. We play to the second time around. We've got to like, look at those things too. Yeah. You've been pretty consistent with the starting lineup. You've got a deep bench as well. Um, so how do you balance as a coach? How do you balance that need for results with also giving everyone some game time? Yeah, it, it always be nice to play to play more players when we have we get those 3-0 leads. It's nice. I think it becomes tougher this year. The last two years where they had the state tournament, where there's so much relies on your percentage of uh, goals for goals against and all that. It makes it a little a little bit harder to get to get people in. You get a little more worry about it because you want to have certain results and have the right score, not just win. So you're playing for like a 3-0 win, and that kind of affects it a little bit more. I don't. I, that's the one kind of knock I probably have of the state tournament, the way it's set up now is that. Because you're not just worried about a win, which you should, probably really should be. You're worried about goal differential stuff, and that can affect your sub rotation. However, you know we're trying to get some younger guys into play. We got like 13 seniors, and so it's hard to balance to get those young guys in. I want to get them playing, and we'll actually, we'll have, in addition to trying to get them in games, we'll have some competitive practices where the upperclassmen will end up sitting out because they played so many games in a week, and we'll try to get the other kids to get after it in our practices so they're still getting some competition with with varsity level elite varsity level players, you know? Yeah, uh, you know, our state ranking seems to be affected by the opposition that we play against, right? In the Cal League, do you feel, you feel the Cal League is, is not as competitive as it used to be, or are we just a really strong team? It's hard to gauge, you know, how good we are, you know, because there's been a few games where we've just completely dominated. Yeah, we were definitely the strongest we've been the last two years. And this year, I would say, I would say we're even stronger this year than last year with some of the players of some of our upperclassmen, including Owen Tank and Goal, yeah. um, has improved. But the league is, I think it's taking a little step back. And we also lose teams like Masco that's in there. We, we would have competed with them the last couple of years, right? We, we always did compete with them the last five, six years. So losing them, not having them on our schedule hurts for two games as far as that um, power conference ranking, whatever, however they do it. Yeah. So I think it's affected us. So if we don't beat teams 3-0, it doesn't really help us because they're not ranked that high. What, what the league doesn't realize and the state doesn't realize that these games are tough stuff. Because yes. they're league games. Hamilton Wenham's never not going to be tough. Right. Linfield's never not going to be tough. Even though if you might be two, three goals better, then I mean, it's not going to show it's going to be a 1 0, 2 1 game like the last couple of games we played against them are. And that doesn't get represented in by the MIAs, unfortunately. Right. There seems to be a real togetherness in this squad. I know you've coached them for a decade, probably, a lot of these kids, and especially the seniors. And it's led by some real standout captains. I mean, how would you describe this group versus others you've coached you know, over the, over the years? Well, I think the big difference here, it's like having 10, 12 captains now is really what it's like. I think we've already, we've always had some strong captains, especially the, like, at least not always, the last three, four years, we've had some really strong captains. And, you know, going back to like Cam McDermott, because I was brother Kellen's, you know, was captain. Now going back to them, we've had some great captains in the team, but now we have a group of kids who are all leaders and that makes a big difference. So it's not just the captains we're relying on. You have other guys, you have all the other seniors in the program, they all lead in one way or another. And you could argue, you know, we have Ben Carter, who's a quiet kid out there, comes in and starts us, starts us from scoring against Linfield in the way game in the rain. There's a little bit of leadership in the guy. You know, he's going up the field thinking he's going to score and trying to take that chance to do that. That's some senior leadership right there. And that's kind of happened all, all across the board with our players and our team. Yeah, I mean, it's a squad with a lot of seniors, um, but there's also been some really good contributions from the underclassmen. You know, uh, really bodes well for the future. You've got uh, Nolan Smith and... Uh, uh, Finn Ingalls has been fantastic, and then you've got the freshman twins, uh, the Gasparo twins, have been uh, really impressive. I mean, how would you assess their impact on the season and how they're doing? Yeah, so yeah, Nolan, right from the start, has been just so tenacious on the field, like getting up and down. There's not someone who chases as hard as he does on our whole field, our whole team, um, and that's like invaluable out there. He always provides a spark when he gets in, so you can't ask anything more than that. And, uh, you know, Sean stepping in at center mid, he's been one of our first subs coming off the bench with him and Nolan coming in. Has, has done really a nice job stepping into that center mid spot. He's always getting, he's, he's tough in there for his, his size and being a freshman, he plays tough still. Um, and then going back to, to, to Finn, he, he stepped up, he got an opportunity when Ben got hurt a bit to play in there and he, he's just taken off and been fantastic. Um, his like, his composure on the ball and how he plays, you can't even tell him and Spencer apart half the time on the pitch out there, it's fun to watch. And, um, you know, Ryan's finally got healthy now. The other Gasparro twin, he's gotten healthy and he's stepping up. So he's going to give us some good minutes in there and help us give us some spells in the back line too. And we still got another group of kids like the Martin the Martin boys and like that. So, like, when we're at practice, these guys are always knocking us and playing hard. And they're going to be ready to step right in when, when, when and if we need them too this year, never mind for the future for our program.
Yeah, the Martin Twins have always looked good when they've come in, uh, you know, in, in these games. You've still got a couple of key players to come back as well, uh, you know, with uh, Aquaviva's missed most of the season, and he's a key player. And then you've got Duncan Coyer and uh, Will Thornton. What do you think these guys are going to bring to the team when they when they come back? I mean, it's it's going to be awesome when they're when they're when they're coming back here, right? So, I mean, the last time Will played, he stepped in the field and ran by everyone on Pawtucket, and he started out scoring a goal on the road with them and kind of set the tone in that game. And we missed him since then. Uh, we've been able to get by, but not having his his presence on the field is certainly missed. Teams are scared of him, and so when we get that back. That's going to be awesome. And um, you know, Duncan's been great all year on the sidelines for us. Really, a positive influence. He's already been a, a key component to our team without even playing, to be honest. And uh, I think Will T fixed that same. Will Thornton fixed that same thing. These guys have been great in the sideline. I have a lot of respect for them and how they've helped out the team and done whatever we'd asked and gone above when they're not even playing. And um, Duncan's going to bring some stuff in that left side of the field where we can use it, help out in the forward line a little bit more. Getting a left-footed player in the attack is going to be awesome. Will T is going to provide some some real strength in the middle. We look about last year what we did against Beverly and what he did against the North Reading game. He may have been like our top most important player and top three important players in those couple games, and there was a huge games. Yeah. So we're looking forward to getting him back to play some minutes going into the tournament too. Absolutely. Uh, I have to mention the two leading goal scorers, James and Kalen. I mean, those guys have contributed 22 goals, 11 each between them. Uh, they're both in great form, quite different types of player, but what have you made of their contribution so far this season? I, I think the key is they kind of play off each other a little bit. Like, it's not like they're always giving each other assists back and forth, but it's one or the other a bit in our games, like on, on what they're doing. And sometimes both, yeah. you know, so that, that part's great. They both have that, um, you know, they both want to be the guys that are going to score and they, they'll find ways to do it. Um, James a little more clinical with how he's finishing and doing stuff now. He's been real impressed with, you know, from the free kick he had in Amesbury to the finish in Hamilton Wenham. Really top-notch fin top finishes. So that's like the difference in his game this year is he's getting his chances and then some of the harder chances he's putting away and like really, really quality finishes. And Kalen's just around the ball all the time. The kid's going to score from, from his, the side of his head or something or from his shoulder. He's going to get a ball in the neck because he's always in the right place. Um, he's done a much better job of playing with his back to the goal from us as of late too, which is going to help moving down the way too. Yeah, he's got an amazing knack of just being in the right place at the right time, you know. Um, so you've already secured a uh, place in the playoffs, and I think victory at Georgetown tomorrow will all but secure the Cal League title again. You've got seven games to go in the season, so what do you want to work on now to make sure this team is, is ready for a deep run in the state championships? Yeah, well, I think what we're, all, we're always been talking about, and even we're playing a team that we know we're up a few goals at halftime, we're always trying to get better to make a run to win that state title. That's our goal is to win the state championship. And we're, if we're not being shy about that or bashful about it. That's our goal. Um, so we want to keep getting better towards that as we're going. So tomorrow's game against Georgetown, they're going to, they're going to be really stingy on defense. They're going to pack it in, play us really tough. So here's a chance if you're in a game in a state tournament game, how do you how do you go about scoring a goal on a team like this? Or maybe you're pressing because you're down a goal in a state tournament game, they're packing it in. How can we get a goal? So here's an opportunity for us to improve on a part of our game, you know, to go down, knock Georgetown off and help us to be prepared for the state tournament at the same time. We also want to work on some of our you know, keeping our record clean so we get the best CD possible we can moving into the state tournament. That part's gonna help us too. Although there's a group of guys that will go on a road with our senior leadership that's going to win games, it would be this team. So I have confidence either way, but it would always be good to have another home game. Yeah, absolutely. So which of the remaining games do you think is going to provide the stiffest test? Um, you think uh, Central Catholic are going to be a tough test? Yeah. Um, Central Catholic, so that's why I put them in Beverly at the end of our schedule, to get us ready for the tournament. Like when they asked us to win the play, I'm like, it's going to be the end so we can get ready for the state tournament and have a couple of tough games. So Central Catholic's going to be good. They're about, I think they're around 11th or 12th in the state in Division II. Yeah. And they play a real tough schedule in their league. That's going to be a good game for us. North Reading is a solid team. They're going to come here and give us a run, give us a game too for sure. So I'm looking forward to playing them again. They were a little better than I thought they were going to be, and I'm looking forward to that game. Uh, and Beverly's not as strong as they were last year. Div 1, they're going to have athletes. It's going to be a good game. So you can't answer this already, but, you know, million-dollar question, how far do you think this team can go? Our goal is our goals to win it. We were really loud. We were, we were, you know, the team that beat us won it last year. I think if we had a home game last year, it might have been a little different. And, and we have a road game like that. If it comes around this year, we'll prepare for it a little bit differently and be ready for it. So if we do travel, we'll be in a better spot next time. And I don't think we'll go down 1-0 in a game like we did this past. If we, if we have that opportunity again, and I think with um, the way our defense is playing, our keepers playing, um, 
we're going to have a little advantage over other programs on that, never mind with our offensive ability that we have too. Thanks, Sean. Uh, I know I'm speaking for all the fans out there. The team is fantastic to watch. Uh, it's great, great season and good luck with the rest of the season. And uh, Congratulations so far. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. So there you have it. Coach Blue's views on the season so far. Fantastic for him to spare the time to speak to Clipper TV. I know we're all really excited to see where this is going to lead. The next game is away at Georgetown. A victory there will probably seal the Cal League uh, for another season and set us up for the last six games of the season to see whether we can go 18-0 and set us up for a run towards the state championships. Go Clippers! Blues, blues.